everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending upon where in the world you're joining us from today. Welcome to Live from the Ranch. My name is Ken Ramirez, and my co-host today, as in every episode of, of Live from the Ranch, is Juliana DeWillems of JW Dog Training and Behavior in the Washington, D.C. area. Hi, Juliana. How are you? Hey, Ken. I'm great. Feels like we just saw each other because we just had a long time together with Clicker I Expo know. Live. It was, it was a great experience. Did you enjoy Clicker Expo Live? I loved it. As usual, my goodness, the speakers were incredible. It was just such an information-packed weekend, and I am just extra excited for in-person now. Yes, me too. In fact, for me, it's interesting because as one of the people, part of the KPA and KPCT who plans Clicker Expo, I've known about the content and knew who our speakers were going to be and have had conversations with them about their event, about their topics. But boy, seeing it all come alive in per, on the screen and, and watching all the presentations, I really, I really had a good time. I was really pleased with it. Um, and uh, I guess I'm going to take this opportunity, if that's all right with you, Juliana, just to remind everybody that uh, if you are an animal training professional or an enthusiast, we have some great events coming up. If you missed Clicker Expo Live, or if you were there and you'd like that magic to continue, our three-day in-person conference will be taking place in Portland, Oregon, April 5th, 6th, and 7th. That's Clicker Expo Portland coming up in April. It's even better than the, than the virtual format, and the virtual format was absolutely wonderful. And I also want to remind you, that our season, speaking of events, here in at the ranch in Graham, Washington, kicks off with monthly offerings starting in April. So you can learn more by going to clickertrading.com. And so um, I just really didn't want to miss that opportunity to talk about Clicker Expo because it is coming up. And one of the great things about it, as I think you know, Juliana, is that Although many of our speakers are the same, we have new speakers, but all of our speakers that are returning have brand new topics. They'll be talking about other things, not the things we talked about at Clicker Expo Live. So we really hope that everybody will join us because I think it's going to be a lot of fun in Portland. Um, and of course, my guest today uh, was also just involved in Clicker Expo Live, and that's Lori Stevens. I want to talk a little bit about her before she comes on the screen. Uh, she. Uh, uses humane and scientific methods to improve the health, behavior, and performance of animals. Uh, she continually studies the interactions among animal behavior, movement, learning, and health. And this effort has reflected in her innovative approach. Uh, Lori teaches online courses called How Movement Works, Training Skills for Building Confidence and Balanced Learners, which she does through behaviorworks.org. And uh, she teaches a course called Aged and Engaged through the Karen Pryor Academy. But she also teaches workshops and presents at conferences worldwide, including at Clicker Expo, which was what we were just talking about. And there she's presented on movement, fitness, and aging dogs. Lori is also the creator of the Balance Harness, and Lori has been our guest on Live from the Ranch before. Lori, how are you? I'm so glad you could join us today. Hi, thank you. I'm so happy to join you. And it seems like, yes, we were just all together <laughs> for Clicker Expo. So I'm thrilled we didn't have to wait months to see each other again. That's true. But, you know, I was thinking about it when Juliana and I were talking about it. I realized you know, we spent the whole weekend together, but we really didn't have the time to have in-depth conversations. You know, uh, you and I talked in passing briefly at a quick meeting that we had. Um, uh, I had a chance to sit in on your on your on your session, and I realized, oh, this is kind of what we're going to talk about today. And uh, uh, had a preview of what maybe my dog Marlin is going to get a chance to to rehearse and practice today. And we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, and I'm looking forward to having this hour of personalized one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, but before we get to that, um, I guess I'm curious as as I want to talk about aging dogs. And I want to talk about um, some of the, the classes and the courses that you teach. Uh, how did you, what brought your interest to aging dogs? I know you've always had an interest in movement and always had an interest in physical fitness. So I suppose I can see the connection, but I'd, I'd love to hear it from you. What led you to 
helping people with their elder dogs? Well, you might be surprised to hear this. It was a veterinarian. Um, it was in 2005 and a veterinary, one of my veterinarians, I have a few uh, <laughs> for my, my, me and my dogs. Um, she just kept saying, if you'll just make business cards, I want to send some older dogs to you. I think they could really benefit from what you do. And, and this was in 2005. And I was like, uh, you know, I work full time at the university and, you know, I'm not sure when I'd have time to do that. And then I decided, well, what the heck, you know, I'm so interested in, in behavior and movement and the combination and health. I decided to make business cards and, uh, she sent me, it seemed like every aging dog I was going, well, I have a six week wait. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, it, it just built from there. And that was just and, from, you had a six week wait, but that was just from one veterinarian giving you references. One veterinarian. Wow. That's, that's correct. Amazing. Yeah. And, and what did, what did that, I mean, you, I'm asking you to sort of put yourself in her or sure. his or her mind, but what was it about what you taught? that she found would be helpful for aging dogs. Yeah, what she knew about me is that I I did both hands-on work, um, so body work, massage, um, and I also did movement work. And the aging dogs were struggling. Everybody was asking her, or not everybody, but you know, several of her clients were asking her, um, how can I help my dog move better as they age? Because different breeds, this happens at different ages, but you know, you might have an aging dog that is very active, runs around the ranch, for example, but they start to show, eventually they start to show weakness in their hind end. They may have a, maybe a little bit slower to standing up from a down. They may have a little trouble standing to eat. They may not jump up on your tall platform as easily. I don't know. I haven't asked you that yet. They may no longer jump on the couch or in the car or on the bed. And, and so she was, she was able to offer some things, but, you know, mostly around, is there any pain? Um, and how can we alleviate pain? It wasn't, how can we, um, help that dog move longer and move better and get stronger. And um, so that that's really what she was looking for. And that is what I started doing. And initially, I was a bit shy about moving them um, around too much <laughs> because um, you know, I didn't want anybody to get hurt. And um, and so I tended to focus more on body work, but then I found that as soon as I started asking them to do a little more movement, they wanted to do a little more, more movement. And there's this whole, you know, brain engaged doing things with somebody that feels really good. So does body work. So I would go back and I started going back and forth. I would do some body work and then I'd ask them to move a little and then, um, I would do more body work and ask them to move a little. And I was noticing that by the end of the hour, they looked better. <laughs> they were actually moving better, which seems kind of bizarre, but it's true. And so I just kept going. Kept That's learning. really interesting. It's fascinating. I love that. Yeah. And do you find that it's veterinarians that are the ones that notice the challenges most and refer to you? Or do people themselves working with their dogs find the need to... To, I, I, I just let me tell you my bias. I think oftentimes as you see your dog get older and you see him change, you just say to yourself, oh, he's just getting older. No wonder he's moving more slowly. No wonder he's moving with a different kind of gait. But I don't know that many people would think to seek help to improve that or help with that. Is, do you find that to be true or am I like missing the boat completely? Oh, no. I was going to say this very thing. And then all of a sudden one day people notice oh my God, you know, my dog is not doing X anymore. They're not rolling on their back anymore. They're not engaging in the same way as they did before. Now, it's interesting because not all veterinarians will say anything other than, um, not all veterinarians will recognize that, that they can improve by movement and body work. And some will say, 
they're, well, they're getting older, you know, so it really depends on the veterinarian and it depends on us, right? So, you know, it does, it does come down to noticing the issue. And if you've got, you know, four or five dogs and one of them is getting older, sometimes it can be kind of a relief to not, <laughs> not have to, um, do a lot with that older dog. So they tend to maybe sleep long, they start sleeping longer, they start moving less and sort of getting into that habit. But then all of a sudden they're like, oh my God, you know, my dog's not, my dog's not moving as much as they were. So what can I do about that? And they might bring it up. And so depending on the veterinarian, um, the advice might be different, but. And, and, and then, as I said, I, I it seems to me, uh, because I've seen you do a lot of your uh, aging dog lectures and things like that. It seems like a lot of that stems from a lot of the work that you do with fitness and, and physically looking at how a dog moves and, and understanding that where did that interest and, in, and in special form of specialization when talking about dog training and dogs come from? Yeah, that's a really good question, Ken. Um, so as you know, I grew up dancing, movement was super important to me. And so I started playing around with movement, but I was like, how do I get trained in movement? And I just didn't know how to get trained in, in movement for canines. I knew how to get trained in movement as a human. <laughs> and um, so uh, I looked into going to through a rehab program, but I didn't want to work under a veterinarian specifically i did want to work out of a, although i did initially but you know when i'm looking i didn't want to looking around and um and i couldn't do rehab without working in a, a under a veterinarian and so fitness all of a sudden popped up and honestly that's why i did uh, a certification in canine fitness because it was um a way of uh, seeing what they were doing and um, and incorporating some of that in, into um, my work with dogs. So, um, you know, I think sometimes we like to think of it all, all of this is fitness work, but it's a combination. It's, it's um, behavior and it's fitness and it's strengthening and it's movement and it's engagement and it's confidence. I mean, it's so many things anyway. Yeah. No, so I, I, I hope that answered that. No, it does. I find that fascinating. You know, it's uh, I, I, I wonder if fitness and being aware of your dog's mobility and the way they use their body, if that has become more common today, I, I, I wonder if, um, I think there's been a bigger emphasis in recent years on being able to read a dog's body language, for example. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you become an individual who, like most of us as trainers, pay attention to what our dog's body is telling us, and we, of course, usually start off by looking at looking for signs of fear, or frustration, or worry, or things like that. But when we see changes in their body because of their age or because of their fitness or because of whatever, uh, I think it makes us far more aware of it. And as a trainer who is very conscious of, of what the body is doing, I don't know that we can really afford to look the other way or ignore it. It, it becomes something that we become more aware of. And I feel like it's not something that, that, beginning trainers are necessarily conscious of the, you know, they're, they're, they're just wanting to learn the basics of how do I teach my dog to do this behavior? How do I, sure. what are the mechanics of doing it? But I think as you become more experienced, I believe that becomes a really important aspect uh, for you. And, and I wondered if you'd seen the same thing. Yeah. Um, it's so interesting because I'd, I'd say that I, I kind of entered the dog training area a bit late. It was about 1998. And, um, you know, at first I'm like, okay, watch their ears, try and watch the commissure of their mouth, you know, watch their tail, you know, it was all about that. And then it was like, okay, is the dog stressed? You know, what might their emotion be now? Um, you know, I need to 
train more cleanly. I found, you know, you and Susan Friedman, who are a huge influence on me. And, um, and you know, started observing um, dogs in a different way. And I think um, that's one of the things I teach uh, in how movement works. It's not really, you know, I mean, every behavior involves movement. <laughs> if they're right. not moving, they're dead. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, kind of like, sorry, but. No, no, but you're right. Yeah, so like... <laughs> but, you know, it's interesting. I think one of the things I thought would be great, because as I've watched you and I watched you at Clicker Expo live this past weekend, and uh, you, you, you taught a four-legged fit, uh, uh, fit and confident kind of course for us at KPA in the past, and I've watched you. One of the things that I think is really amazing is your skill and ability to watch a dog over over uh, FaceTime or over Zoom and be able to give really good coaching and good feedback. So my question for you is, if we take a break, would would you be willing to uh, work with me and Marlon today? I, I think you know, you've met Marlon before. He is going to turn 15 years old this year. Oh my God. And, and Incredible. For myself, I worry a lot about him. Um, you know, you were talking about many people have seen Anytime they see me working with Marlon, he's usually working on a two and a half foot platform and, and, and he leaps up on top of that platform with gusto. And, and as he's gotten older, I've put stairs for him and, and different things to help him get up there, but he won't use them. He jumps. It causes him to jump over the staircase and everything to get on the platform. So this may be one of the first times you're going to see when I work with him, you won't even see a platform in the background. There's just no option for him to jump up on a platform <laughs> because he is so well trained to do that, that I think it is difficult for him, mm -hmm. but he doesn't show it. He comes running in and leaps up on it. And uh, I want to save his muscles and save his bones from having to go through that. So I don't even have a platform here for him to choose from. So I was wanting to see, let's go to a break. But when we come back, can you and I work together with him? Mm -hmm. And I will take on the role of your client, your student, and you, you can talk me through that. Does that sound good? Yep. Sounds great. All right. Well, what I want to do, though, is, you know, at Karen Pryor Academy, we take an innovative approach to developing and supporting outstanding positive reinforcement trainers. With KPA, you can build your skills and knowledge by enrolling in any of our preparatory courses, or if you already have experience, apply to our professional certification program. You can check out our 20 plus upcoming series, including Antwerp, Belgium, Toronto, Canada, Columbus, Ohio, or our new fully online virtual format. You can learn more about all of those things by going to karenpryoracademy.com. So I want to book a session with Lori Stevens and my dog Marlon, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my camera view so you can see a training space, Lori, and then I will bring um, Marlon out and we will uh, we will see how we can work together. And I'll, sure. I'll ask you some questions just about how you start the process uh, with a dog that perhaps you haven't worked with before, you haven't met before. So this is our training space. I've got a little platform that I got for us, but I'm going to go over here. Uh, hey, buddy. Come on, bud. He's laying down, sleeping a little bit. Ken? Yes. We might not want to include him immediately. We might oh, want okay. to I didn't take think about that. That's well, okay. Let me just, uh, I can work with him. Tell you what, buddy. I don't want to make him feel like sure. he's doing for nothing. So I'm just going to throw some some treats on the ground and just let him explore a little bit. That's great. So to start with. So this is Marlon. He's going to turn Hi, 15 Marlon. years old uh, in March, probably. And um, he really, since he's been here at the ranch, he had arthritis for a long time. But when we brought him out to the ranch, a lot of his arthritic movements cleared up. He he gets a lot of opportunity to exercise. He runs all over the place and he looks like a very young, fit dog. So it's only when I look at the calendar that I realize that he's 15. <laughs> That's great. And um, I will say something about the tall platform and that 
you know, he has that confidence to jump up on that tall platform, but you may, you may find that um, that uses up a lot of his strength, hind end strength for the day. So it might be worth it um, using a lower platform that looks like that platform <laughs> or really teaching the two stairs up. But he looks great. Like I'm looking at him right now and he looks so good. Yeah. Um, and you know, what's interesting is, I, like you said, I, I just took the platform away. Uh, I, I, I didn't use the platform during Clicker Expo Live this weekend. Uh, I just sort of decided that I didn't really need it. Uh, and, and I'm hopeful yeah. that he'll, you know, uh, he works well without it. I just like the elevation that it gives it. Right. Um, you might put a treat down on that platform since he just uh, moved over to it. Uh, he was so good about that. Um, okay, so, you know, as you say, Ken, advanced training is just the simple stuff done really well. So we are going to do the simple exercise. I did this at Clicker Expo this weekend. Um, I'll be doing it in my KPA course coming up. I, I often start with this exercise because it's, it's important. <laughs> and uh, it's important for the dogs, for strengthening the dog's hind end. Because their hind end's down and their front paws are up, they are putting more muscle on the hind end, more muscle, using more muscle on the hind end. Um, so we're, we are going to ask him to step up and how that's going to look is you are going to be on, uh, if right now, if you're facing the end of the platform, you'll be over on the, he'll be on the dog side like he is now, and you'll be on the opposite side, standing in the middle and inviting him up. We may have to do some troubleshooting, um, but, you know, we can see what happens when, when you use a, um, now, you know, some people may not have this behavior, but I know you do. So you'll be able to use it, your hand as a target or uh, a target stick like you're doing or a nosed hand touch or any number of things to ask him forward to step up on the platform. What we're looking for is him not being in an angle. So we want him to have a runway up so we can see what that's like um, without putting anything on the ground. But, but let's just see what the first one looks like with, uh, let's just put a few treats down on the ground and then you go get on the other side of the platform and invite him to in front of you. Okay. Hey, bud. Step a little closer to the platform. Nice. You put one foot on it. That was great. And now reset him about six feet out since he sat down. Maybe and we'll try, try again. Down. There you go. And you can go ahead and move back over to the other side of the platform. Invite him up again. Marla. Oh, you might going. need to step step back just a hair. Hey, buddy. He's, okay, he's let's bring forward. him back for a reset. And I was wrong about stepping back. <clears throat> I'm changing that back to where you were before, which looked good. Nice. Oh, yeah. Ha, 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 ha. Look how good he looks. Oh, he looks so good. Yeah, just reinforce him like 100 times. And when you ask him off, maybe ask him off to your right or your left with the target so that he goes back to that same area behind him for reinforcement. Hey, buddy. You want me to have him come back? To no, I want you to come back to where you initially were, which is about five feet behind him. Yep, there. Scatter a few and go back to your position. Good. So that will be our little cycle. You'll go where you are now. Yep, you'll invite him up. You'll feed him a few times. You'll ask him off with some sort of target and take him back to six feet or so, five feet, whatever. He's a big dog, so we want him to have plenty of space to come up straight. Come on up, bud. Good. Nice. 
Oh my gosh, he looks so good, Ken. Hear that, buddy? She says you look good. Really? It looks great. He looks great. I'm just happy that he's on the platform on the on the little platform. I was having I didn't he didn't come on it initially today. And I thought, okay, we'll have to work on that today. <laughs> right through it. I am just thrilled. What are we going to do next? Do you want to reset him again? Yes, reset him again and, and just give him a break. You can pick up the platform or anything you'd like to do. Well, that went really quickly. Yeah. Um, so to so to strengthen, that's great. So to strengthen his hind end, um, what we would want to do is build duration on the platform. He had really nice alignment. I couldn't see his back right foot because of the camera angle. So the next time we put the platform down, we might put it a little closer to where you just put it versus uh, so far this way, um, <laughs> so rather than closer to the camera. Um, his alignment looked pretty dang good. Yeah, um, you know, what we're looking for in alignment, I'm just going to pull out my goat. Um, I don't know if you can see this, but but we're looking for both hind legs to be under the hips rather than wide or narrow. Um, I just or look I can see what you're showing me. I am not able to see that from over here in my workspace, but I can see it. I okay. can, oh, I'll have to change the camera. Hold on. Hi, okay. buddy. Can you catch this? Okay. Now I can okay. see you. Okay. So um, we are looking for, this is one of those observation skills for movement nerds, which I know you're one really. Okay. So, <laughs> so we want the hind feet under as much under the hips as, as they can be for the uh -huh. dog's build um, rather than way out or one foot in front of the other. This is my little goat. Um, same with the front legs. We'd like them directly under the shoulders rather Perfect. than one in front of the other or wide or too narrow. We want the neck, neck light nice and long. I mean, the back nice and long, the tail not tucked. We want the head in neutral. Now we're feeding up a little bit. When we feed up a little bit initially, what we're doing is encouraging the weight shift to the hind legs because we're building muscle back there. Gotcha. So if it, some dogs um, that I've worked with are really, really good at compensating by getting up on a platform and then kind of putting their weight over their, their front feet so that they don't really have to have the weight back on their hind feet. But we are going to pay special attention to, to making sure he does put a bit of weight and therefore not overworking him. This is all about approximations, okay? okay. We're not going to get to 20 to 30 seconds of duration today. We might add a few seconds. Okay. Uh, we might add five seconds or 10 seconds. I don't know. Um, this is a foundation exercise for really beginning to understand the weight shift and the body position. Um, and then this is an exercise we build on, but to, to eventually get so strong in the hind end that they can, that he would be able to put his front legs up um, over time, like in six weeks or so to eight inches with his uh, weight shifted to the hind end and hold that for about 30 seconds. Okay. And these, this exercise, this particular exercise um, takes like five minutes a day. I mean, it right. really is not yeah, I can, I can time see intensive at all. Yeah. And it's also a foundation to moving to rear feet up, although we would never go to eight, eight, we would not go to eight inches, but rear feet up and then starting to target with the hind feet and then backing up. So okay. we start doing a lot of um, add-ons to to this very exercise, including give me a paw so that the weight shifts to one back paw more. If we okay. ask for one front paw, um, moving the head around while they're up there to kind of challenge the balance. There's so many things, Ken. So what, what do we want to work on next? What would you like to do now? Do you want to do the same thing again? Do you want to do it from a different perspective? You want me to change his platform? Yeah. No, I think what we should do is 
I would recommend that we do that again and you see if you can add a little duration. Okay. Not much, just a little, a few seconds. And I don't know if you noticed, I, I added on three or four seconds of duration already. I did. I, think I wasn't supposed to. No, no, you were great. You were great. Let's see if we can add a little bit more. He did really well. He didn't shift. So is this a good angle where his, his yes. side of the body will be toward you? Yep, that's fine. Okay. Do the same thing again, but just add a little more time. That's right. And okay. and then and then the second round, I'll ask you to do something new. Okay. Hold up, buddy. Yeah, he's going right to the platform now. Oops, it, he lost his balance. That's okay. Well, that's that tells us something. So information. Lori, I saw, uh, I think Penny Bolton was in our, I happened to see her uh, name in the uh, uh, chat window. And she was asking a question about where I should be reinforcing him. Am I reinforcing him in the right place here or should I do it higher or lower? So if you if you do it a tad higher like that, where he's looking up at you, his his weight distribution is going to be on his hind legs, which is the point of this exercise. Okay. Um, then once he is used to in the habit of putting his weight on his hind end, then you can start uh, concentrating on feeding um, more at in a more neutral position rather than the head up slightly. Okay. So we're not trying to crank his head back, but no, okay. no, I... yeah. So next time you come up, he comes up, um, keep your feet together if you can, just to not have yourself at an angle. Right. Yep. Good. See if you can target him looking right and left. <laughs> Good. And maybe not quite so much so he didn't move his feet. Oops. Too much. Let me uh, try. You might try using just your hand. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Good. Good. That's so much better. One more each side, and then we'll give him a rest. Look how good he looks. Oh my gosh, Marlon, I'm so proud of you. Ah, I think you can do a reset now. So you have a choice, Ken. Um, you can either do um, up and down this time, head up and head down, or you can ask him for a paw when he's up there. <laughs> if you ask him for a paw, I recommend that you get low on your knees. Look at you. Um, so that it's like you read my mind so that he doesn't have to lift his paw very much because the higher he has to lift it, the more balance requirement that'll take. So, and you probably, did you kneel just intuitively? Yeah. Well, that's because that's how I work with him usually. I don't, I don't ever work with my dogs like this. Yes. I, on a platform where they're looking at me. Or yes. My dog platform i tend to go down yeah and you know what i i often do the same thing but i sit on a little stool because you know it's more comfortable for me but i do i i also I like to get the comfort part. <laughs> All right, so, so reset him get him back to the platform and then either uh try feeding higher or lower or do a, a paw yep you can do either one and if you want to kneel and see if he'll still come up on the platform. That would be an interesting um, approximation right. as well. Let's try that. Let's put it there. Hey, bud. Beautiful. Good. Beautiful. A little bit lower. There you go. Just yeah. notice that when I do it lower, he still brings it up high. See how high it comes up first? Yes. He's so used to doing that behavior. 
Sorry, buddy. He'll figure out that he needs to be in the middle of the platform um, in order for it not to tilt. Or you can use a longer board if you'd like. Sometimes I use a longer board with the material in the middle as a visual. Do you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> He's so good. Nice. Very nice. Very good. Oh, I, I clearly switched to the other goal. No, that's fine. Absolutely fine. You can give him a break. This is a lot for his little self. Boy. So many new things. Good boy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to be out of view for a minute. I'm, I'm going to refill my, my pouch. Can you also grab another board if you have it that's longer and we'll put the anti-slip material in the middle of it? Sure. So I want a board. That's longer than that one, okay. but we'll wrap the anti-slip material around the center of it. So, because what's happening is he's hitting the end of the board and it's, right. it's becoming unstable. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? So I have. Yes. Perfect. This one? Yeah, you don't, that's enough. You don't need to wrap it more. And you can just put that excess material as his runway. Sure. It's good. See how he does with that. Look at him. He's like, oh, this is my runway. <laughs> so now he won't have that um, unstable platform well, that's, that's, that he was yeah, having. That makes sense. Oh, he likes the high hand. Okay, that's good. So many older when I dogs. Low, he touches my upper. Yeah. Up. Yep. That's because this is a known behavior for him, but a lot of older dogs can't do that. Right. So I'm telling our audience that they may have to put their hand really low. Well, you're going to be getting up and down a bit. <laughs> I could use the exercise. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> okay, so that time he didn't really have enough space to turn around and walk straight up. So his hind feet are a bit wonky. So let's just reset him all the way back beyond the black. Yep. And then you go back over and ask him up. Hi, bud. Nice. Much cleaner, right? much cleaner his left back is a little bit um forward so you can try feeding low and see if he moves that back <laughs> just front <laughs> feet forward <laughs> you can try a couple of things if you want um you can try asking for the his left his right paw see if it moves back I know you know you're right from your left looking at a dog. That was good. Yeah, he's going to hold steady so we can reset him and ask him to do that again. Hey, everybody. You did good. Let's come over here. Yeah. You're doing a good job, bud. Good job. The camera changed. I'm not sure why. Okay. Let me, uh, let me change that back for you. It makes a decision for me. Oh, it does? Well, because it's you moved. not supposed to. But it, it does. <laughs> That's what I've noticed happens. It switches. All right. Hmm. <laughs> he it's... is doing, I'm just going to make some observations about him. Sure. For, um, for his size and almost 15, um, what it makes me want for every dog is for them to have a ranch. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because he is incredibly fit um ken do you notice we'll just give him a little break while we chat a minute do you do you notice um that he has trouble getting up from lying down after he's slept a while or any anything that you notice that's just changed as he ages yeah he uh 
as he's gotten older, uh, he just was laying down now and he gets up, he's he's much slower and mm -hmm. it's the first four or five steps. It's like he's working out the kinks in his bones and then he sure. gets into a trot and then he looks perfectly normal again. Sure, yeah. So um, I'm guessing this is that um, he's having to use his front end more um, to get up then his back end as his back end has weakened a bit that naturally happens because the center of gravity is up around the shoulders versus um, right in the middle of the dog. Um, they we're, tend to care. Not, believe it or not, we are running short on time and we're going to have to okay. wrap the session with him because I want to take okay. questions from our viewers, but I thought I'd set it sure. up one more time. Okay. I can't see you anymore, by the way. Oh, well, I guess that's my clue but I should come back to you. All right, I'm gonna let him go and rest a little bit. And I'm gonna come back and join you and I'm gonna suggest, let's take a quick commercial break as, as it were. In fact, what I wanna talk about, just, just wanna talk it, tell everybody a little bit about your uh, live courses that there you're you offering. And uh, we can talk about that and answer some of our guest questions. So if our viewers are interested in getting uh, a more detailed look at what we're doing today and you want to get some practice helping older dogs retain or regain skills and energy for their whole life, join Lori for her four-week KPA Live group virtual class. It's enrolling now. In fact, enrollment closes on February 6th. So this is just the last few days to join Lori in one of her live classes. There's recorded lectures, there's live coaching, there's a, an interactive discussion group. You can find out more by going to karenpryoracademy.com. So I'm gonna invite Juliana to join us as well because Juliana is such a skilled trainer and teacher herself. She often has questions of her own, things that she would see that she would ask. Sure. And she's been paying attention to the chat window, which would allow us to uh, get questions from there. Hey, Juliana, how are you? Do we have questions or do you have questions? We do have a few questions. First of all, that was a really wonderful session. I think we, the viewers got so much out of both watching Ken train and out of Lori coaching. That was really, really interesting. Um, Melanie is wondering, would it be okay to just toss a reset cookie in between? Mm -hmm. Ken walked away. Can you toss? Can I answer that? Yes, please. <laughs> if you are good at tossing and you don't have a bunch of furniture, the food will go under. Absolutely. I like for there to be kind of a nice loop. I toss, but I also know how to toss treats. I also do um, nose to hand touches off and then toss. I do a variety of things with my dog. So um, you absolutely can toss a reset cookie, but I encourage you to either roll it about to where it'll land about six week, six feet behind the dog, um, or uh, or to put a ball back there or a automatic treat dispenser, because we yeah. want to give the dog enough room to turn around if they're a larger dog to to make a straight shot up to the platform. Yeah, often, you know, in, as Juliana knows, as one of our KPA faculty instructors, we often teach people to toss treats to reset. But for a variety of reasons, particularly where I worked, Marlon for many years worked with four and five other dogs at the same time. And toss, tossing food when there are four or five other dogs around you is never a good idea. So he never got into the practice of going and looking for food that is tossed. He actually takes a long time to find it. He searches forever for it. So I tend to almost always reset him manually because I know it will be more accurate and more it will be more timely. Absolutely. Yeah, multiple dogs, tossing can be an issue for sure. <laughs> yes. It's a great way to start a fight though. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I swear he fights. Let me show you. Um, <laughs> Uh, but really, furniture, anything that the treat can roll under just delays everything. So um, 
you know. One of the things I just, I, we don't have we don't have an ad for this. I'm just going to bring it up because uh, KPCT recently last year came out with what we call our on cue. Uh, training treats and they are flat little pieces and I use them a lot because they land and they don't they may bounce a little but they sort of stay where you throw them and that I, we find that to be a really useful uh, a useful treat so we that's one of the reasons we use those mine are being delivered today I've got a bunch of bags coming yeah I I didn't expect to but I ran out of them uh during clicker expo live i, I used so many over the weekend i yeah. i haven't even i haven't even asked the office to send me more yet i have to do that after this after this uh episode maybe they'll hear you <laughs> but the people who take care of the orders are not listening in right now i don't think but. Yeah, probably not um the dog house rules asks uh how much of Lori's work involves the dog's awareness of their own body and movements, proprioception? Oh my goodness, goodness, you're after, you're after my heart. Okay, um, that's the thing. Okay, that's one of the reasons I do this work. Um, it would have been really difficult, I think, to start with, can you walk up to me and stand in balance? And um, by asking for two paws up to a low platform, we're helping the dog become aware of their own positional, um, their own position, positional awareness. Proprioception is absolutely about um, position and movement, equilibrium, um, balance. Um, so we are developing those skills. If you look at one of the um, previous Live at the Ranch, I, this is my third, maybe? Yeah. Um, I think so. Um, one of them, we did Cavaletti work. Do you remember that? Yes. And that is really good for proprioception. But this is as well, stepping up to that kind of narrow platform that he that he initially had trouble with. He didn't have trouble with it during... Um, this session, but this is all about developing proprioception and awareness in the dog's butt body plus our observation skills of what do I need to change in order to help this dog look more in alignment, like I described with the goat. Can, can I ask a question in just in case? I think the word uh, proprioception might be new for some people. And while I think we've sort of defined it as you've explained it, can you just make sure that, that everybody understands what proprioception is? Yeah, it's the sense through which we receive, we perceive position and movement, um, equilibrium and balance and force veloci velocity and heaviness. Um, we have these uh, noriceptors in our muscles and um, joints. Hopefully I, I've got that correct. I think I do. Um, when we think about yourself on your property, Ken, and you're mm -hmm. walking up to a log, you don't say to yourself, I need to bend my knee X degrees bend my hip joint so many degrees to step over that you know what your speed is going to be over that you know how your camera just changed you know how much to um, lift your leg to step over the log um, automatically um, and so that's proprioception that you automatically have that motion sense of um, if somebody hands you something heavy um, if you don't know it's heavy, your arm might drop. If you think it's going to be like, like, you know, two ounces, way two ounces, and somebody hands you something that's 10 pounds, you are going to, to, um, your, your hand is going to drop, but we get to know about how automatically in this motion sense, how much we need to account for the weight of something going into our hand. That's a good explanation. I appreciate that. I I, mm -hmm. uh, I I know that it was a term the first time I heard it years and years ago. I went, "What's that?" And I thought maybe other people might wonder. So yeah. What other questions do we have, Juliana? So I have a question for you, Lori. I'm working with a senior dog who has a lot of pain and arthritis issues, mm -hmm. and I've been wanting to dabble into some of like the little bit of the Cavalletti work or the stuff that you did with Ken today, but I'm just like you said at the beginning, like I'm so paranoid of 
hurting her more. Mm -hmm. So what are, are there risks with this? Like, what should I look out for? What should I be careful for? It seems so simple, just step up two inches, but I, just, I don't know. I just, I'm really worried. Excellent. About excellent <laughs> question. And two inches for Chihuahua is way more than two inches mm -hmm. for Marlon. Okay. Yeah. But um, I'm not saying it was a Chihuahua, but just know that two yeah. inches is relative. That's on the dog. Um, so number one is pain meds on board and getting, telling the vet, getting permission from the vet to start doing some exercises. Now, the thing is, is arthritis is inflammation of the joints, a vet will tell you, and building muscle around those joints is what helps um, helps dogs move that have arthritic joints. Um, so it, you know, I'm not a veterinarian. And so it's super, I, I find it super important to get um, a clear, yes, please go ahead and strengthen this dog and to get pain meds on board if needed first. And if that means going to a rehabilitation vet for uh, four weeks or six weeks before coming to you to continue with movement work, um, I've done that so many times. I've said, really, I think you need to go to an orthopedic specialist or a rehabilitation vet and work with them first. And when they give you the all clear, come back to me. And the, sorry, Ken, you can go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, I just had kind of a follow up question of like, what do you ever anticipate that this type of movement could make them sore? Like, should we be worried if they're a little ouchy the next day? Should it be? Because I think if I do a workout, especially with novel movements, it, it runs the risk of m my muscles being sore. So like what what would be expected after? Do you want them feeling really good? Or would it make sense for them to be a little ouchy the next day? Well, so some dogs do get ouchy. <laughs> Love that term. Mm -hmm. uh, Marlon might, might, for example, be a little slower to get up tomorrow. He might feel it in the next day or two. Um, and he may not because he's such an active dog. Some dogs may. It really depends on the dog and it depends on how hard the workout was for that particular individual. So, you know, sometimes I go to the gym and I really don't get sore. And sometimes I go to the gym and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I can hardly move my legs. And so, you know, it really depends on the individual and it depends on, um, depends, you know, on pain and all sorts of things. <laughs> so Lori, are, the, are some of these, these kinds of exercises, the kinds of things that you'll be doing in your uh, four week live class that you're starting up soon? Well, yes, I'm every week I'm going to do approaching and then developing some body work techniques, massage techniques. And uh, every week we'll be uh, doing platform work of um, front paws up, hind paws up, hind leg targeting and backing up. But again, it depends on the individual and it depends on where they are at physically. And if I see something that looks off, I will say, let's don't do that with this dog. And, you know, I wanted to point out to people that if they're interested, that there are actually two different levels that they can take. They can either take a class where you work with them as individuals like you worked with me today. But there's another level of the course, which is just where they're just an observant and they can observer they watch you work they watch you coach other people and they are never have to be on screen at all they simply are watching in the background and learning that way so both both options are available and i just wanted to make sure people knew that because i know some people oh i don't want to be in front of a lot of other people sure. i will say that that's great because you're getting <coughs> direct coaching from Lori. i'm about to cough here <coughs> Let me just go to Juliana and see if she has any other questions. <laughs> well, can yeah. I add something? Uh, yeah. I was going to add something. Go for it, Lars. Um, <laughs> and the materials in this Age and Engage course will be available for a year. So they can really take their time if they need, if they sign up at um, the Engage level and they figure out their dog really needs some pain meds and those might take a while to get on board and um, then they can always come back to that material in a, in a month or two months or a week or whenever they need to. That's good. Excellent. Thanks for that information about that. How about other questions? I'm sure we must have other questions, Juliana. Yeah. Melanie is asking, is using a pivot pot to get revolution too much torque for my older dogs? My 13-year-old can still do it, but should I be asking her to do it? 
it depends. I haven't seen your dog move. So um, that's something I typically um, add later um, and may not add at all for certain dogs. It depends on the breed, how active they've been. Um, you know, are they showing signs of their age? Um, so it's not a... Um, it's not a beginning exercise that I would do. And so, you know, our dogs want to do the things they've done for years, right? Just like, you know, Marlon's giving a paw and he's giving it high because that's the behavior he knows. And it's great. I typically, with dogs that haven't done it, start lower, build a high, and then I build for raising your paw without the hand being there. Um, so, there, you know, that's a good exercise too. There's so many... There's so many things. <laughs> but don't so you pivot. think it's, I was going to say, don't you think it's, it was a good question for Melanie to ask because you, she does want to be paying attention to how sure. we're responding to that. Yes, absolutely. It's absolutely fantastic question. And um, so, you know, you could lower the pivot pot, perhaps. I don't know how tall it is. I don't know what size dog you have. But you could try and just do one step to the side and one step to the other side rather than pivoting all the way around or halfway. Um, there's a lot of things you can do to, to back off on it and then add gradually for your 13-year-old. So it's an excellent question. Great. We have another question in that same vein about using a wobble cushion with different levels of inflation. Yeah, so I tend to add in anything that's unstable later. Mm -hmm. I first want to give the aging dogs um, strength and confidence and agility, balance, flexibility. I want to give them a little bit more before we start adding in the unstable any unstable equipment. And depending on the dog, I may not add it in. For some dogs, I will add it in. So um, I tend to use the, the platforms with air, the propels from Blue 9, because they are pretty stable for an unstable platform. <laughs> and, and Lori, does it make a difference if the dog has is used to using a, a pivot pot or a wobble board? In other words, if they're already using yeah. it and using it well, seems to me that it's a big difference than a dog that's just being introduced to it for the first yeah. time. Absolutely. Um, that is a, an extremely good point and they may be doing it, but that, but they also may not know what to look for. The person may not know what to look for and what doing it well means. Um, I'm not saying that's the case with Melanie, but I am saying that, uh, their body position might be compensating a bit for as they get older, they may still be appearing to do the behavior, but it may look slightly different. Are they, you know, it, so, so what we do normally, like what I will do in this KPA class is um, we'll take some video of baseline movement. And so that we can see how that changes over time. And they're, specific movements I take a dog through um, to to look at baseline. And so that's that's a key thing when you start adding things to an older dog's repertoire, movement repertoire. That's great. Great information. And I, uh, Juliana, first of all, thanks to everybody who put questions in. We love getting your questions. Lori, I appreciate your time today. I, I really appreciate the way you coach. Uh, I often don't feel like I'm being coached by you, even though you are coaching and giving me good direction. Uh, I feel like your approach to coaching is is very kind, it's very gentle, but it's very thoughtful and very observant. And, and I think that's a, a really great trait. That's why I love having you on the program. I'm glad you visited us again for the third time. I'm sure we'll have you on again in the future. Uh, but uh, I appreciate you. your time today, and I hope that your KPA Live class that's starting in the next week or a couple of weeks or so, I hope it goes well. Registration, Thanks. of course, ends on the 6th. I'm going to say uh, a couple closing notes after now that I've said goodbye to, the, to all of our uh, our guests today. I want to remind everybody that next month 
on Live from the Ranch, my guest will be Laura Monaco Torelli. We have had her on the, the uh, program before. We've often talked about cooperative care. Uh, it's such a popular topic. She's such a great teacher of that topic. We have not yet focused in on exactly what we're going to do and what we're going to demonstrate, but I'm sure she will demonstrate something with her dogs. I will demonstrate something with my dogs, and I think we will probably learn a great deal. That's March 7th, 1 p.m. Pacific time. I also want to remind you that if you have ideas or thoughts of things you'd like to see on the program, uh, just go to the Ranch website and uh, fill out a form under share your comments and suggestions. We also encourage you to, sh to share training videos that you'd like to share with the community. We're happy to provide a platform for that as well. And finally, just a reminder of all of the different um offers that we presented today. We just wanted to re remind you of our upcoming events, Clicker Expo uh, in Portland, classes here at the ranch. If you're interested in becoming a dog trainer, look into the DTP professional program. And of course, if you'd like to learn more about working with aged dogs, uh, don't hesitate to, to check in on Lori Stevens' class that is uh, taking registrations uh, for the next few days. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thank you, Lori. Thank you, Juliana. And thank all of you. Happy training.